So the LMB was founded in 1947 as a small unit by the Medical Research Council um, and as part of the Cavendish Laboratories in the Department of Physics at the university. And at that time, John Kendrew and Max Perutz were studying how to use x-rays to determine protein structures. And the unit was very successful and is really thought to be one of the, the birthplaces of modern molecular biology. So then in um, 1962, the LMB, the Laboratory of Molecular Biology, was founded with a dedicated building here on the hospital site. And so after about 50 years, we outgrew that old building and we've been in this new building since 2013. And so now um, I think 600 people work in this building, wow. including around 450 scientists. And this building has a very particular shape, hasn't it? It does, yeah. It's, it's in the shape of a chromosome um, where each of the four arms um, houses one of the divisions of the LMB. And the LMB is not just you know, a prestigious research institution. It has actually been named the Nobel Prize Factory. Can you tell us a bit about that? So 15 uh, different people at the LMB have been awarded 11 Nobel Prizes. And that, that's quite a lot for one institution. It's a lot, yeah. Yeah, and in fact, in the first, in the year that the LMB was founded on, on this, the new building was built, there were two different Nobel Prizes awarded. So the first to um, Watson and Crick for the structure of DNA, and the second to Kendra and Pruitts for their work on protein structure determination. So the LMB really has a strong tradition of funding um, basic, important biological problems and also developing new methods to study those problems. And so a lot of that has been really groundbreaking research. So a lot of these prizes, well, at least a few of them, quite a few, have been um, related to protein structure and, you know, cryo-EM, crystallography. So is this really a tradition at the LMB to, you know, study this type of research? Yeah, I mean, that's how the original MRC unit was started, mm -hmm. right? By, by yeah, looking exactly. at how to determine protein mm -hmm. structures. And that's really been a strong tradition throughout um, its entire history. And it still is a, a real big strength of the LMB. It's, and it's paying off. <laughs> <laughs> and you just happen to work on cryo-EM and protein structure, which is really great. So could you show us around and explain us a little bit about of course. your research? Let's see the lab. As we've discussed, I use structural biology, so we really want to understand what proteins look like. Proteins are the machines in our cells that, that do things and, and uh, form the structures in our cells. And so if we can understand how those are built, we understand how they function. Now we use cryo-EM a lot uh, to understand their structures. And the specific protein complexes that we're working on are involved in regulating gene expression. We really are interested in studying fundamental, important biological problems. So questions like how are genes expressed, how are proteins made, how do cells grow and divide. And so by understanding those really basic processes that happen all the time in our normal cells, um, we will get insight into disease sometimes, but that's not our main motivation. It's really to understand how normal cells work. I guess it's important to stress as well that, you know, Science also exists to understand how things work. That's right, yeah. That's the main purpose of science. That's right. Um, and now I'd like to know about your science. Can you show us a bit, you know, what you do? So what we do is we take the genes that encode the proteins we're interested in and we insert them into other organisms like either bacteria or yeast or insect cells. Um, we then tell those organisms, like insect cells, to overexpress our proteins, produce lots of them. Um, and once they've produced lots of them, we can break open the cells and purify the proteins we're interested in. So once we have our purified proteins, we often assay them. So look at their biological activities in the test tube. And you know, once we can reconstitute their activities in the test tube, then we can really understand, start to understand what they do and how they're regulated in the cell. Really, the other main part is to look at their structures. And for that, we often use cryo-EM. We are now in the cryo-EM room, and this is where the magic happens. 
Yeah, so after we purify our proteins upstairs in the lab, we have to prepare them um, on a support that we can use for imaging here on the electron microscope. And what we do is we cool the protein solution very quickly okay. to liquid nitrogen temperature. So once we cool them uh, rapidly like this, it, it prevents the formation of ice crystals, which are damaging to the proteins. Um, so the proteins are suspended in this vitreous state. We image them with the beam of electrons and we collect our micrographs. Now often for a typical project we'll collect several days worth of data on this microscope because what we do next is we, we process those data, we, take, um, we extract the individual particle images from our micrographs and we average them together to form a 3D structure. And so we need many different images, usually in different orientations oh, on the grid to make up, to build up this 3D structure. Okay. So why study protein structure? If we can understand how all the atoms are arranged in a protein, in other words, how the side chains are positioned, we can start to get a, a good mechanistic understanding of how it performs chemistry, how it does enzymatic reactions in the cell, how it binds to other proteins, and how it functions. And that's crucial for understanding how these fundamental processes in the cell work. You know, our aim here is really to understand fundamentally important biological processes. And we don't always know what the medical or economic benefits are, that, are of that before we start. Uh, but by really understanding how normal cells work and function, um, we often do gain insights into uh, diseases and, and have medically relevant um, applications. So we're now in the um, LMB canteen, which is quite a special place, and it's also the last secret to why the LMB is so successful. So can you tell us a little bit why? So traditionally, everyone comes here for their coffee in the morning, lunchtime, and afternoon tea. And it's a great place to not only socialize, but also discuss science. So you often sit with people from other groups, other divisions, um, and discuss science. So it's not uncommon to see people come up here for morning coffee and still find them here at lunchtime <laughs> discussing a particular problem. So lots of things have been worked out in the canteen. And this is, I think, incredible. Now that I'm not a scientist anymore, I notice how scientists are so passionate that, you know, you go for lunch and you think, oh, no, I don't want to talk about work. I just want, you know chill out and you always end up talking about you know science and work during lunchtime it's incredible yeah no it's it's great so why did you want to become a scientist in the first place did you have someone that inspired you maybe or I guess I've always, I was interested in lots of things when I was a child, but my mom was a technologist in a small uh, local regional hospital. And so I used to love going into the lab with her on the weekends when she was on call, um, counting cells or looking, watching her work the machines. And I think that's one of the things that inspired me to do science. Um, and then in university, I worked in lots of labs, and I really saw the the, um, the fun and the excitement, the curiosity that you can you can address in in research. So that's how I got to where I am today, I think. So you think it's important to be in touch with science, to be exposed to science, well, not necessarily a research atmosphere, but, you know, to be exposed to science, to, you know, get that passion growing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I didn't know what scientific research was when I was a child. It wasn't until later when I was exposed to it. And so now I try every year to go into a local school and, and discuss, do an experiment with the children and try to um, make them enthusiastic about science as well. And I know the LMB invests quite a lot in public engagement, as it's called, so sending uh, researchers to schools like you do or inviting students and the general public over? I mean, is this yes. important to, you know, get the public in touch with science and understand what's happening? Absolutely. I mean, um, as much as we can, we like to discuss our work with, with um, people in other areas, uh, with school children especially, and the LMB has demonstrations at Cambridge Science Week, we've had open days, and there are a number of programs within the LMB to get out into schools and other, other areas to demonstrate our work.